Episode 3 of the Disney Plus's beloved MCU show Loki had quite a surprise for fans worldwide, ones that even had casual watchers of the series filled with anticipation. Tom Hiddleston's title character was revealed to be bisexual, and the series director Kate Herron couldn't be more proud. Loki made Marvel Cinematic Universe history with his grand reveal, and like all dramatic reveals in the history of entertainment, this one too had its fair share of critics. One of the most prominent critics is the creator of popular LGBTQ shows, Queer as Folk, and It's a Sin, Russell T. Davies, who seems to have a lot to say on the matter. According to Davies, the buzz around Loki being inclusive is actually pretty pathetic. His critique is based on the fact that the audience is basically settling for too little. Loki makes one reference to being bisexual once, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's like a pansexual show. It's like one word. In all honesty, the guy does have a point. This is pretty much the reason why writers and directors can get away by doing the bare minimum. That's all the audience needs anyway. Before we discuss further, let's have a look at the actual scene from the series. In episode 3, Sylvie played by Sofia DiMartino asks Loki about his love life and suspects that he's been with a would-be princess or perhaps another prince. Loki answers to a delighted fanbase, a bit of both, I suspect the same as you. That's as far as Loki goes in exploring the character's sexuality, which makes Russell T. Davies' point somewhat substantial. That is all there was to the scene which makes one wonder if that really is all that we must expect as a form of LGBTQ plus representation in popular media. However, as insignificant as it might seem to Davies and other critics, Loki's director Kate Heron celebrated the moment on social media right after the third episode finished airing, claiming that to acknowledge Loki's bisexuality was a crucial goal all along. It is a part of who he is and who I am too. I know this is a small step, but I'm happy and my heart is so full to say that this is now canon, Heron tweeted, clearly indicating the significance the grand reveal holds in her eyes. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Heron, who herself is bi, went on to say, I didn't want to feel like we were just wedging something in, but we had this beautiful scene where these two characters are being really raw and really honest about who they are. And I was like, well, it's a part of who he is and who they are. When questioned whether Loki's sexuality could be expressed through on-screen relationships rather than just simply acknowledging it, Heron claimed, I would say in our story, this is how we acknowledge it. But I hope that paves the way for deeper exploration. To a significant portion of the fan base, that's enough of a promise to stay invested in the future. While it's true that we have instances of LGBTQ representation that far exceed the impact of this particular scene, it's also important to acknowledge why Loki's bisexuality feels notable to many. MCU is notorious for its glaring lack of LGBTQ representation, and even though the upcoming Eternals movie will feature Marvel's first openly gay superhero in Brian Tyree Henry's Fastos, previous MCU movies have been accused of straightwashing over the years, and quite rightfully so. Much to the disappointment of fans, canonically queer characters have been represented as heterosexual, which includes Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie. This one is particularly infuriating. The much-hyped gay character that was set to appear in Avengers Endgame was eventually revealed to be a nameless participant in Steve Rogers' post-Thanos snap support group. All he did was momentarily mention that he'd been on a date with a man and to make it worse was the only scene he appeared in. You have to keep in mind that this has been the kind of LGBTQ representation the fans are accustomed to, so the Loki scene in Episode 3 is definitely a step up. Another interesting fact noticed by the fans is that during the conversation between Loki and Sylvie, the characters were surrounded by pink, blue, and purple lighting, the three characteristic colors that make up the bisexual pride flag. DiMartino herself pointed out the beautiful lighting in a tweet, which adds to the unique effect the scene has on her fan base. Moreover, another reason why the scene is such a huge deal is that it comes after the character was previously confirmed as being gender fluid. Interestingly, in episode one of the show, a TVA agent hands Owen Wilson's agent Mobius a file about Loki containing his details. And guess what it says next to the word sex? That's right, fluid. However, this isn't entirely new and is merely a reference to a previously confirmed fact. Loki was established as being gender fluid since the 2014 comic issue where Odin refers to his son as my son and my daughter and my child who is both. In an interview with Insider, Heron clarified, he's gender fluid in the Norse mythology in the comics and it felt like an important thing to, as you say, make sure it's canon. Now that you have a better perspective on why the brief disclosure in the third episode is a huge deal to many, it's worth considering Russell T. Davies' contradictory opinion in more depth. Not only did he remain unfazed and unimpressed, but he went as far as to claim that the scene was a ridiculous, craven, feeble gesture during a recent interview. He even spoke at a Pride Month panel with Swansea University and went on about TV commissioners wanting gay stories while sounding warning bells about how these stories are being told by big streaming services like Netflix and Disney+. 
Films. The critique is fairly deserved to a great extent. Disney has long been criticized for gesturing toward LGBTQ plus representation in its projects without giving any screen time to non-straight characters or giving them a chance to explicitly address their orientation. In a recent Disney film, Jungle Cruise, Jack Whitehall's McGregor discloses his sexuality to Dwayne Johnson's character without, and this isn't an exaggeration, ever using the word gay. Another example is that of Cruella, which nods toward a supporting character's queerness without ever confirming it or even bothering to explore it further. It almost feels like Disney is trying to pander to a specific portion of the audience without risking any other part of the viewership. Remember when Josh Gad's Le Fou was said to be Disney's first openly gay character? Or when Elsa was rumored to get a girlfriend in the Frozen sequel? Whatever romantic speculations the fans had made for Sam Wilson and Sebastian Stan's Bucky Barnes on the Falcon and Winter Soldier were straight up denied by Anthony Mackie. No wonder there's an ever-growing list of dissatisfied fans. In contrast, Russell T. Davies has a wealth of experience writing about LGBTQ people and communities in popular media, so it's natural for him to expect more. Before rebooting Doctor Who in 2005, he wrote 1999's trailblazing series Queer as Folk, a show that followed the lives of three young gay men in Northern England. He headed up the Doctor Who spin-off series Torchwood, which followed pansexual fan favorite Captain Jack Harness. And that's not where his experience ends. He went on to write the three-part LGBTQ TV and web series Cucumber, Banana, and Tofu, and the Hugh Grant starring A Very English Scandal. In his most recent works, he has written the critically acclaimed It's a Sin, a show surrounding the lives of a group of gay men during the HIV-AIDS crisis in the UK across the 80s and early 90s. All of this pretty much explains why Davies remains unsympathetic to Marvel Cinematic Universe's rather weak attempts at LGBTQ representation. It's obvious that they pale in comparison to the kind of media Davies is used to writing for. Also, to add to Davies' critique, the show largely ignored any further mention of Loki's sexuality in the rest of the season, with a more considerable backlash resulting from the self-cessed storyline as romance blossomed between Loki and his variant Sylvie. There are numerous other fans who have also called for more and better LGBTQ representation in the MCU for a while now, but luckily the frustration voiced by fans and Davies hasn't been useless. Marvel Studios Executive Vice President of Film Production Victoria Alonso has promised more LGBTQ characters and storylines in the future shows and movies. A new Doctor Who audio special written by Davies himself is also set to be produced this year, and Loki has been renewed by Disney Plus for a second season. Will the fans finally get to see an all-out bisexual Loki that they've been waiting for since ages? What are your opinions of the recently aired season of Loki? Did the bisexual representation speak to you? Or are you Team Davies and expect a lot more from MCU? What kind of representation would you like to see in the future? And what do you think will actually make a difference to the opinions of a diverse range of audience? That's the most important thing. Whichever side you're on, let us know in the comments below. Before you leave, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Talk to you next time.